Live from the center of the universe and the Thrive15.com World Headquarters. Let's go! Presenting the world's only business school without the BS with optometrist and entrepreneur Dr. Robert Selner and the Forest Small Business Administration Entrepreneur of the Year in your ear, Clay Clark. It's the Thrive Time Show. Three, two, one. All right, Thrive Nation, welcome back to the Thrive Time Show on your radio. My name is Clay Clark, your co-host with the Mo-Ost. Joined here with the man with the plan and the guy who's a Tulsa tycoon. He's really an optometrist. So he's, he's kind of he's an optometrist, but but he's kind of realized that, you know, he's trapped inside you that optometrist's this. body. He's really more of an, of, of, an, of an entrepreneur at this point, really. I mean, Z, how much are you? Are you 1% optometrist, 99% entrepreneur? What's 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 the uh, the breakdown there? What's the percentages? I'm 100% optometrist and I'm 100% entrepreneur. Really? That's just math. Is that possible to be a <laughs> That's how you have to approach it. Yes. He's that's big time. How, that's how you do it. The, the indivisible integrity you have to be 100% of two things is really incredible to me. You should run for office, my friend. Oh, <laughs> and, and I'm actually 100% of a few other things, too, which I won't get into right now. But the point is, it's like, okay, can you be a father and a husband and do them both with equal zest and equal opportunity and 100% passion. Can you, know, you? You know what I've decided to do is because my, my, my wife's on the show <laughs> today, right? You know? Yes. Yep. And uh, she's inside the box that rocks my incredible wife, Vanessa Clark, of 15 years. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm enjoying this conversation about, you know, the... The 100%, 100% father, 100% dad, 100% well, here's business the, owner. It sounds like Thrive. In the Bible, which I know this is not a religious show, but it, it stresses that you're supposed to basically you're put the wife first, right? And then the kids second. So I, I guess I'm 100% all in for my wife, and then I'm like 1% <laughs> with the kids. Well, yeah. See how that's going to work out down the road. I just thought I would say it and see what happens. No, the, no, the point is, is that whatever you're doing, you do 100%. Yeah. So yeah. when I'm dealing with optometry issues, I'm 100% there. And when I'm dealing with my entrepreneur issues, I'm 100% there. So you say, what, you know, you break it down and it's kind of like you can't do that. You've got to be all in with whatever you're with, with whatever you're doing. That's what entrepreneurs are. You got to you got to be able to take that and, you know, get your get your plan for the day and whatever you're doing, you're 100% in that. So you know, when I you're with your kids, you're 100% with your kids. Yeah, you know? I want to pile on here. It, it, it brings me to, I know this isn't a marriage show, but a marriage example, they say, you know, it can't be 50-50. It's 100-100. And I think Z's right. He's saying, whatever you do, be fully in, fully present. I know, Clay, you do that uh, great with you. You like to bring this up. I know Z does it too, the cell phone. You know, when you're with your family, the cell phone is off. Or when you're in a business meeting, you, you're not going to be reached because you're 100% present wherever you are. And I guess you're just applying that <laughs> across the board, Z, to everything you do, a, a, every business this venture um everything. yeah you weren't expecting that one no. were you clay <laughs> clark i have a little a little funny story for you guys we did yesterday's show was about elon musk and here's just a little uh, a little fun story for you about elon musk apparently if he's in a conversation with somebody who doesn't know what they're talking about he just gets up and leaves without explaining why <laughs> that's what he's known for he'll just get up and leave and i guess that the wealthier he's become the more he does this and so people said that, like, if someone doesn't prepare for a meeting and it's obviously they don't know their point, yeah, he's just known that he'll just get up and leave. That's just his move. You know, this reminds me of a, 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 a very successful business owner that we know who is a close friend of ours. I won't say his name. And I think you probably know who I'm talking about. Super nice guy. But every now and then he'll just walk out and leave and you're like i had to leave <laughs> that's the explanation there's no explanation can't like, suffer fools just, just he just gets up and yeah, goes yeah. now thrivers today we're talking th we're talking about the mailbag questions that you are emailing and so we have many great people just like you who uh, according to forbes you know 57 percent of you want to start a business and some of these people are emailing us who actually have started a business and so we have a client in tempe arizona and we won't divulge the, the intricacies of his business, but he's in Tempe, Arizona. By the way, the majority of our listeners, Z, do you know this now? The majority of our podcast downloads at, Thrive, at thrivetimeshow.com yeah. are now coming from IP addresses away from Tulsa. So we're sort of a, we know people people in Tulsa, a few people know us. We, we get some high fives at Oklahoma Joe's. We get some fist bumps. <laughs> but apparently we're a big deal in other places that we can't verify. The universe. So you're saying with 7 billion people on the planet and only... A uh, fraction of a fraction of a fraction percent of them in Tulsa. We're actually getting more downloads and IP. I'm sassy today. I'm just kind of sassy. That whole hundred percent question. You got me fired up. Oh man! Well, gonna, here's I'm, let's fight. Here's let's my let's, give it to you. Here's let's my question. A, here's my qu a fight. Here's my question. This is a cash flow related question from a client in Tempe, Arizona. He's a thriver out there in Tempe, Arizona. He asked the question. He says, "Hey, I'm a one man shop. 
and my personal and business finances are jumbled together. What's the best way to keep personal and business finances separate? Z, I'm going to start with you, and then I'm going to be kind of like the uh, Monday morning quarterback with some other moves to pile on there. So what would be your response here for our Thriver out there in Arizona about how to keep personal and business finances separate? Uh, different accounts, number one. It's very simple to open up a new bank account. In fact, um, one of our primary sponsors or one of our super sponsors, as we call them, Regent Bank makes it so easy to open up a new account. And why would you have two accounts? You're like, oh, I got to keep up. Yes, you have to keep up with both of them. And then you're purposeful. You know, if it's personal, it goes in this account. If it's business, it goes in this account. But they're all intermingled. I know. Stop it. Pick a date and now separate them. Uh, work backwards to the beginning of the year and separate everything out. That can be as simple as a bank account separated, uh, two credit cards, two credit cards. Yeah, you have two credit cards. If you don't want to sit there and look at the statement and wonder, was that a business or personal expense? You have two credit cards and you if it's business, you use your business one. If it's personal, you use your personal one. And then when you get your statements in in the month, you know that they're they're separate. So you have to set up multiple accounts. That's the only way you can do it. Now, Thrivers, you, the only way you could go to Regent Bank and to set up a different account is you'd have to walk through the lobby. Yes. You'd have to walk and through the... And you probably the, hear the, uh, the song we wrote for them. Through the lobby of Regent Bank. Oh, Regent Bank. Regent Bank. That's where you're going to have to go. You have to walk through that lobby. Walk, in, walk it into that lobby to set up that bank account. In the lobby of Regent Bank. Regent Bank. I look forward to seeing you guys one day in there playing air guitar, just as all, everyone's coming in to sign up accounts. Just You're because just no one's no, ever seen it's going to be a real guitar, Miss Bird. <laughs> yeah, just because no one's ever seen us play the guitar, and we have no evidence we can play the guitar, does not mean that we could not. I think I think Z could get some platform shoes. He could do that, and you could. What's something you could sport? Who gets to wear the puffy shirt? I don't think you're going to get him out of the sweatshirt. So oh. I'll wear the puffy shirt. Yeah, yeah. You just do the whole get up. I, I don't mind doing the puffy shirt. Now here's the deal, Thrivers. I want to tell you this: no question is too small or too big. And what I like to do, what Z and I like to do, is we want to get into the, the into the details, kind of the stuff behind the stuff. So I'm going to recap what he what his advice was. Broadcasting live from the center of the universe, you're listening to the Thrive Time Show. All right, one he's saying set up separate accounts. That's that's the move. Set that up. Action step number one: set up separate accounts. Two, you got to have different credit cards for your business and personal. Got to have different card credit cards for your business and personal. Okay. Now three. This is the deal. You've got to have, and, and again, I, this is just something I want to pile on here. You've got to have a business model that makes sense. That would be my final tip for you because here's what I see. I see a many thrivers out there, and I, lo I love you guys. And I want to help you. But you have a passion for something that nobody else in the world cares about at all, and you're calling it a business. But it's really just a hobby. And so this is maybe a, suit, a side question here, Z, but you see this a lot of time. You have somebody who's really passionate about I'll give you something I'm passionate about that maybe thrivers don't necessarily care about. But I love the Patriots. I'm into the Patriots. That's oh, my gosh. thing. Oh, gosh. And so I don't know that if collecting Tom Brady bobbleheads is a viable business move. Now, I could spend a ton of hours optimizing Tom Brady bobbleheads and get to the top of Google for it. I could, I could devote huge amounts of hours to it. But at the end of the day, if it's a hobby – that you're into, therefore it's kind of personal, but it's not really a business. You've got to kind of pull the plug at a certain point. You've got to decide, is this a hobby or is this a business? So, Z, I want to ask you this. What would advice would you have for the thriver out there who's kind of working out of their garage on something that's uh, a hobby? Maybe they're building boats, and they've started to say, well, I'll make an LLC, and this will be my boat building business. You see, now we can kind of justify it a little bit. But they're not making any money. What advice would you have for the thriver out there? I would say come to our in-person workshop because what may be happening is, is there's things out there you may not know. You, know. you don't know what you don't know. And you might have a pretty squirrely idea. You might have an idea that is not making money right now. You may have an idea that you're doing out of your garage and, and some of the people that come in your life say, what are you doing? But you know what? Until you know you're doing all the checkpoints that a new business needs, until you know that you're actually giving it every opportunity to succeed, you don't know. I tell you what, there's been so many entrepreneurs out there that have had an idea, have started it, and everybody around them looked at them and said, you're crazy. I mean, you're just, you're just, you're just flat out crazy. What are you thinking? And next thing you know, we're all buying the thing. We're all using the thing. We can't live without the thing. And we're all like, how could we, how could we ever, ever, ever imagine life without that thing? 
So listen, don't let anybody be a naysayer, but make sure you've got to double, 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 triple, quadruple check that you're doing all the moves to give your hobby slash idea slash business every opportunity. And that's why, do we have any tickets left uh, for this week's? One. One ticket left. So that's if you're it. out there and you say, I think he's talking to me. I, I, in fact, my business is out of my garage. Well, and I want to clarify because that one ticket you can bring, it's not like you have to come by your lonesome. You can bring your business partner, your wife, your husband, whatever. But you need a call to get that one last table reserved. Up, up to three up to three people can come on that ticket. Yep. And uh, tomorrow, the 24th, we're doing an in-person workshop here in Tulsa at our, at our home uh, studio, home headquarters. Right here on the left coast of the Arkansas River. Oh, yes. The River Walk, right here in beautiful Jinx, America, suburb of beautiful Tulsa, Oklahoma. And you could come, bring your team, go through. It's two days, seven to three, seven to three. It's Friday and Saturday. And we're going to teach you with downloadables and templates. We're going to teach you all the moves. And if you say to yourself, yes, I'm doing check, check. I'm doing all these moves. I've optimized all these moves. I'm doing all these moves. And you can't sell your thing. You didn't fix a problem that anybody wanted to get fixed. You can't make money selling your thing. Then you know what? It's time for you to maybe go to business idea number two. And uh, you know what I'd like to, to, as you're asking here about keeping personal and business finances separate, mm. I can speak to this about if you don't keep them separate. I remember back in the day, you know, Clay and I were college students. I was a, a student at college when we started DJ Connection. We had An been attractive married. college student she was. <laughs> but, you know, we got married. And so here I am just my junior year. So we didn't know any other way to do it. And let me tell you. It was life changing when we got two separate credit cards, one for business and one for um, personal. We had two separate accounts, but literally the end of every year tax season, it would take, I, I can't even tell you how long it would take us, especially as the business grew in the beginning, it, we could handle it. But we went through every single receipt for the entire year. So Clay, that, them out. So Clay the guy that we were just talking to that's sitting yep. there going, okay, I, okay, I get it. I need to, uh, I need to come to your thing. Yep. How do they find information? Where do they, how do they, we've got, it's tomorrow. It's absolutely tomorrow. So it's not too late to get here to Tulsa, but how, what do they do? Well, what, you, what you have to do is you have to go to thrivetimeshow.com. You go to thrivetimeshow.com and I would do your homework. You can check the references. There's, there's literally hundreds of people who've attended these. You can see their feedback. Uh, there's video testimonials of people sharing their firsthand experience. They're not paid actors or people actually sharing so you're going to hear all their faux pas and all their real experiences and all their the, the nitty gritty or you can read some online reviews but at the end of the day you have to decide look, look is, is this going to be a good investment of my two days and i'm going to tell you what we've thought about every detail we have really nice seating for you uh, we have multiple screens so you can see all the detailed information as we teach search engine optimization that's not a esoteric vague concept it's very detailed it's very linear and if you're not careful, your brain will explode as you become overwhelmed with knowledge bombs. And so what you have to do is we ha you have to take notes. And so we've actually created the thing called the Boom Book, which is a workbook in which you can take the notes. And so you can, t you can leave here with all of your notes bundled up in one place. And there's no question that that's too small. So in, in between each session, we take a 15-minute break to answer your questions. You can get coffee. You can answer your questions. But at the end of the day, we want to help you get to the other end of the rainbow, Z. Nice tie-in. Did you oh. say that's because I started this song? I did. My vast music knowledge is, is truly incredible. Wow, you named that tune in like, I was three or four. I mean, you were like, <laughs> I would not want to challenge you and name that tune, by the way. The guy who plays this song, if you get a chance to YouTube, Somewhere Over the Rainbow, and the artist, he's from Hawaii, he's an incredible human. Incredible. Now, Thrivers, check out thrivetimeshow.com, and we'll be right back with you. This show is brought to you by Adobe Creative Cloud. If you're a photographer, graphic designer, video editor, podcaster, business owner, or just creative genius, this is for you. All of your creative tools, all in one place. Creative Cloud includes the entire collection of creative apps for desktop, from favorites like Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator, to new tools like Adobe Experience Design. Check this out. You can create podcasts seamlessly in high quality with Adobe Audition. Did you miss the exposure or looking to create a stunning and beautiful photo? You got to download Lightroom. Okay. The latest release of Adobe Creative Cloud is here with incredible new features in Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, and all of your favorite apps, plus millions of Adobe stock assets and new premium images are built right in. So you can turn your brightest ideas into your best work. 
fast. Make sure that you check out Adobe Creative Cloud. It's at adobe.com. Once again, Adobe Creative Cloud at adobe.com. Now this is a story all about how my life all got right, flipped Thrive upside Nation. down. Welcome back to the like Thrive to Time Show on your radio. Right you Nothing weird the here. Prince Prince just listen to the Fresh Bel-Air. Prince of Bel Air intro. You remember the show, Z? Remember the show? Oh, I loved it. Yeah, it was kind of a kind of a clever little show. Now, this was the show that was kind of a big deal right before I started the DJ business. And Vanessa was talking about before the break, you know, she's talking about the answer to the question that this Thriver asked from Arizona. This Thriver was asking, he says, you know, hey, I'm a one man shop and my personal business finances are jumbled together. What's the best way to keep personal and business finances separate? And you gave him two specific uh, moves. And I just want to keep giving him moves because I feel like there's so much here. And I want to get deep. And if you're going, Clay, you're getting too deep, man. Then you can just cue up the monk music and I'll stop, okay? Sound, that sounds good. Okay, so this goes out to our, 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 our thriver in Tempe, Arizona. So one, Z inst- instructed you to make sure you set up separate accounts. Go to your bank. Do that. If you're in Tulsa, go to Regent Bank. Why are you not going to? Don't be a sucker. Go into the lobby of Regent Bank. Ask for a sucker. Tell them the Thrive Time Show sent you. Regent Bank, check it out. Set up separate accounts. Well, okay, the, number one. But let's say I, I'm hungry and I want to go somewhere before I go to Regent Bank to set up my separate accounts. It's lunchtime. It's noon. Does Regent I'm Bank serve baked beans? Do they do that now? Uh, not that, No, I don't think Are so. Are they serving burnt ends? Uh, last time I checked, they were not. Are they serving ribs? Um, but that, I no. I you know, it's interesting it. because a place that I go to that does serve all three of those things is a place none other than... Oklahoma Joe's. But where are they located? I mean, how can I find them? Well, there's is it three. Just an imaginary, just there's heavenly barbecue joint. There's three locations, and because I'm a man of, of habit, I basically only go to the one over there by the Bass Pro Shop. And so they've seen a disproportionate amount of sales. And they've seen a huge increase since the show <laughs> started. They're like, man, there is a guy who goes with his Are son. And <laughs> he faithfully buys some serious baked beans. And I've run into some thrivers in, in, the, in the line now I'm giving fist bumps to. And they're like, man, these baked beans are as good as advertised. That's one location, Z. That's one. Now, I know the other two. The other two. The other two. other two. I've never been to them. They they could they could not exist in my mind. I really have to hear where they are. They could be like unicorns or something out there, just running in the field. But the other two are sixty first and Sheridan. Sixty first and Sheridan. That's his newest one, and the other one is next to the iconic Kane's Ballroom downtown. But it's only open for lunch, so that's I think it's like eleven to two or three. Have you ever been down to the downtown? Have you been to the downtown one? I, I've seen it, but it was closed because I actually went to a concert there, and I poked my head in and I thought, there it is. There's that little slice of heaven. You wanted to bring some beans there's, for Clay. There's the, I can still smell the aroma of the afterglow. Well, here's here's the deal, Mr. Thriver in Arizona. Uh, one, you gotta you got to keep those accounts separate. Two, you've got to definitely set up a different credit card per business. That's so important that you do that. And I get it. When you're starting a business, I get it. They're not going to give you a business account. Yeah. I get it. You're going to go apply for a credit card. And they're going to say the bank or the bank or Discover Card or Master. Uh, the website I recommend you go to is creditcards.com. And when you go there, you can sort all the different credit cards and all the different offers. But just get a separate card under your personal name for the business and a separate card under your personal name for your business. You know, one for personal, one for business. It can be under your name. I get you, I get you don't have a business credit score yet. I get that your business hasn't established credit. But get two separate cards, maybe a master for the business and a discover for personal or something like that. Yeah, and for accounting purposes, make sure that you keep uh, good accounting of any money that you're giving from your personal account i.e. as a loan to your business. You want to try to keep them as separate as possible. You want to try to establish that early on that, you know, you say, oh, the business needs this, I'll just go out and buy it. And then you say, oh, the business needs this, I'll just go out and buy it. Oh, the business needs that, so I'll just get it. But you need to keep things really accountable because um, you want the business to be able to pay you back personally. And then as it gets rolling and you might get uh, investors down the road, you might get people buying into it down the road. You might sell some stock. You know, you might give someone a sweat equity that comes in and and is working it. But you want to make sure that you have a good accountability of what the business owes you personally going forward. Because one of these days um, with hopefully with with our encouragement and with our training that business will be making copious amounts of money and that will be a problem oh yeah i gotta pay myself back now <laughs> that's fun now move number three is you want to make sure you have a viable business we talked about that but make sure you have a business that's not just a hobby i see a lot of people who are obsessed with a certain thing and you're going I, you still love those beanie babies 
And people are going, that's not a thing anymore, bro. And you're like, no, no, I love Beanie Babies, baby. And you're going, bro, you're the only person in the world still buying Beanie Babies. And you're like, it doesn't matter. I'm going to keep buying them. I'm writing it off. It's a business. So I'm just telling you, make sure it's a viable business. And the fourth tip that I would have here for you is I would encourage you to get some kind of coach or some kind of an accountant or some type of mentor, somebody who knows what they're talking about to sit down with you and, uh, and to help you go through all of your expenses line item. And so a recap is the line item. I encourage you to just wherever you're at right now, because you're asking this question because you're obviously in the middle of the fight. I mean, you've already been doing this for a while. You're not a startup. You've been doing this for maybe a year or, or several months. You need to go line item and put all your expenses. You need to realize, okay, every month I have a revolving credit charge for this particular thing on my personal card. I got to stop that and switch it to this. And so you need to go through line item, all of your expenses. And uh, this is going to probably take you, I'm just telling you, I hate to discourage you. Maybe it's encouraging. It'll probably take you 10 to 12 hours. I mean, it takes you the entire day on like a Saturday. And you just sit down and print out everything and write down what's personal, what's business. You've got to separate it. And it's going to require about a dozen hours of your time to do this, Z. Right. And, you know, if you're in the United States of America, our federal government encourages business. They encourage that. And so a lot of times... If you structure it correctly, and here again, a, a, an accountant to go and get make sure you're structured and make sure you're properly set up. Because once you get it set up correctly, now it's just data entry. It is following what they tell you to do. It's not as difficult. Now, if you if you go kind of willy-nilly for six months to a year or two years or three years and then go with the bucket of receipts into some dude, it's going to be more expensive and it's going to be more of a headache. So try to set it up great up front. But you, one thing you got to understand, and I think one of the things that, that a lot of thrivers out there know is that when you set up a business, now all of a sudden it can help your tax structure. Now now all of a sudden, uh, that lunch you're buying, you can actually, since it was a business lunch or since it was purposeful for that, you can now deduct a portion of that off your taxes. So having a business can be very good as far as tax structure-wise here in the United States of America. I do know that. So some of you out there, the 57% or so that want to start a business, according to Forbes, yep. a lot of them are probably saying, man, you know what, if I had a business... I can be more aggressive. I can, I can, it can be better for my tax rate, which is, at the end of the day, more money in your pocket. Z, is there anything that they should do initially as they're setting up their business to get prepared for that first tax year that will be coming around? And uh, hopefully they did well enough that they will be paying taxes on the money they made. Yes, you know, the thing about it is I, I, one of the things that just makes me crazy, Clay, is when someone says, I'm going to open up a business because I need a tax deduction. And I just want to reach across and just go. Yeah, tax deduction. Woo! Yeah. I've opened up several businesses from no. coast to coast no. to write off whatever. Oh. I'm going on trips I don't even need to go on to write that off. Yes! No. Oh. No, listen, your goal should be to pay a lot of taxes. You go, what? That sounds crazy. That means you're making a lot of money. But <laughs> pay a ton of taxes. No days off. No days off. That's right. So it sounds kind of crazy. <laughs> but uh, one time someone was asking me about my horse ranch and they said, well, that sounds like a good tax write off. I said, no, sir, you don't understand. I want to pay taxes on it. And they looked at me funny. and go, that means I'm making money. What? And that's the goal is to make some money. So, um, but you know, here again, state by state, uh, to answer your question, Vanessa, state by state, every mm -hmm. state's a little different. Uh, the federal government's the same as throughout the United States. But here again, go in and get someone, get an expert to help you set that up. Because of what I tell you to do may not apply to where you live because and people listen to this all around the, all around the world. Should they maybe put aside a portion of everything that they, they bring in maybe that first couple of years in anticipation of taxes? I would definitely recommend that you do so. I would definitely recommend you set aside a set portion. But again, I would talk to an accountant, talk to a bookkeeper. They're going to help you. And Thrivers, when we come back, we're going to get into more mailbag questions from people like from people like Z, from people like you, people like me, people like you. Stay tuned. ThriveTimeShow.com. Are you a business owner? You need to ask yourself right now, how are you backing up your files and important documents? Most businesses have no system for the files in their business. If this is you, you got to use Dropbox. At least sign up for one of their 30 day free trials. Real talk, it's the secure file sharing and storage solution that employees and IT administrators trust. You get as much space as needed at no additional cost. You get unlimited file recovery and versioning, basically creating new versions, and valuable admin controls for secure sharing and collaboration with Dropbox for Business. You gotta check this out. After using Dropbox, you'll definitely feel more secure knowing that a virus or power surge can't ruin your computer and your entire business. 
Try full access to Dropbox business for 30 days. Head over to dropbox.com to get started. Again, dropbox.com to get started. All right, Thrive Nation, welcome back to the Thrive Time Show on your radio. It's business school without the BS and yes. My name is Clay Clark. I'm the former SBA Entrepreneur of the Year, sent here to teach you how to start and grow a successful business. I'm the father of five uh, human kids, and I own uh, quite a few chickens. However, there's a bobcat that keeps raiding our backyard. We have a, a, a real live bobcat that keeps hopping over. He, he lives in the forest, apparently. He comes out. We've stopped all the raccoons, but this bobcat, Vanessa, she's we terrorizing. We have an electric fence now, and I, we, we thought we were good, and we were home. It was so dramatic. Kids yelling, screaming, and crying, watching our chicken getting carried off over the fence. I ran after the bobcat, and then I thought, wait, if I take food from the bobcat, like this could be bad for me. And anyways, it had just done a big rain, so it jumped How big over. is he right now? How big is he? I'm, I mean, he's... He's a cat, but he's a big cat. He's probably about this tall. He's the size of like a dog? Yeah, he jumped. No, bigger than a dog. He jumped our fence, and I realized this electric fence, which is so awesome and has knocked me on my butt several times. Sam knows about this. If we just position it on top of the fence, he won't be able to make that jump because mm. I saw how he got in and out, and it's the one place that doesn't have the electric. He's so smart. But we're going to get them next time. Well, Z, today's show is all about mailbag questions. We have mailbag uh, mailbag questions from real thrivers all around the world. And I am super excited to read our next mailbag question. And for this one, we have live audio. We recorded the call in from a thriver. So I'm going to cue it up. Are you ready, my friend? Absolutely. Here we go. Uh, Dr. Z, you had a question about bobcats. Uh, there's a bobcat that's been uh, terrorizing my chickens. Uh, I live uh, not in Oklahoma. Uh, very, very far away uh, in New England. I'm uh, Bill Belichick's neighbor, in fact. I uh, just want to know, how, how would you deal with the bobcat? Is it legal to use napalm? Uh, I didn't catch your name, caller, from Connecticut. Uh, it's uh, Barry. Uh, b- Barry. Um, you know, I'm going to check the Connecticut, the Connecticut state laws on trapping, uh, you know, varmints. We want to use napalm. Um yeah, I don't know. You know what? I'm sitting there thinking because I don't. Uh, is bobcat like a, or what kind of category are they in? Can you, can you, you know what you ought to do? You ought this to has been a it. discussion at our house, actually. Well, you ought, to, you ought to get it trapped and then get it relocated. And probably have to take that thing so many miles. I don't even know, you know. We uh, actually attempted to uh, use napalm on it, and we didn't know if that was legal. We just want to call this business show because uh, for some reason I'm calling from a CB. <laughs> <laughs> from a truck stop that I can't tell you where it is. Um, yeah, I, you know, the thing about it is I don't, I don't know. I mean, I know coyotes are kind of like you can whack a coyote anytime. <laughs> you, you can you whack know. a coyote with a two by four. That's law. No, I mean, that's I think that's the law. I don't know about I don't know about bobcats or, or pumas, cougars. Wow. Bears. I mean, I know Hopefully bears I don't have a go season. that category. Hopefully it's only a bobcat. No more than that. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. All right. Now, Thrivers, the real question from a real Thriver who really does want to know an answer to a real business question is this. This comes uh, to us from Ohio, Dublin, Ohio. Z, Dublin, Ohio. Have you ever been to Dublin, Ohio? Dublin. You know, I hear that uh, Dublin, Ohio is famous for, well, anyway, so back to the question. So here we go. This is the question. It says, I know recording calls is important, but all of our reps are remote. How do we record their calls? This is from Tim. Can I take this one? Z, can I take it? Yes. And I, I was going to talk about the legality of recording and kind of dovetail with oh, what wow. you say. So go ahead and go ahead and uh, tackle your end of it. And then we'll... Uh, We'll make sure there's because there's a lot of confusion about recording calls. So, well, here is the first thing: um, is that when Steve Jobs started his uh, business out of his uh, uh, parents' garage, I want to be clear that was not legal because technically you cannot start a company out of your garage in California. There's all sorts of laws; you you can't do that kind of move. But he did. Um, and uh, one of the things about building systems is you're going to have to build a system. You're you're going to have to build. Uh, the thing about a system is you can talk about systems and the importance of having a system, but you're going to have to actually build it and you have to show examples of what yeah. you're doing. So, I mean, let's say legally, uh, Tim in Ohio, that you can't record calls in your state for whatever reason, then I would call a different state and sell something else there and record the call there and then use it to, ta- to train your team in whatever state you're in. But there's a program called 8x8. The website is 8x8.com. We use it all the time. And what it allows you to do is to record the phone call. And the reason why you want to record the phone calls that your sales reps are making is there's, there's four big reasons for this, okay? Reason number one, they have to follow a script. 
and they, they 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 just have to. You just they have to follow a script. If they don't follow a script, there's zero way. It'd be like a science project where you don't know what variables were introduced into the uh, recipe or into the actual experiment, and then you're trying to diagnose why something blew up. You have to know the the ingredients, so you've got to record the call so you know if they're using the script. Second, you have to listen for the quality of the call. The quality of the call is just a big thing. I mean, a lot of people mail it in. They don't they don't even try hard. So they sound like they're apathetic, like they don't care. It's you know. Fourth, or the, the third, is you really want to make sure that you're analyzing each and every word of the script, okay? So you want to verify they're using the script, right? You want to verify the quality, but you want to make sure the script you're giving them is actually sane. I can't tell you how many times I've given somebody a script that doesn't make sense, and I thought it made sense, but when I hear them use it, I'm going, oh boy, that didn't make any sense. So that's a big thing, okay? And the fourth thing is you want to have a quota. You want to know how many calls they're actually making. Because if I say I'm making 47 calls, but I'm actually making four calls, and by the way, that happens all the time with sales reps. It gets tough. All right, let's. You know what? Those are four great things, but we've got to break them down. You just roll. Break through them those. down. You roll through those like a like a high speed train from Fran from Paris to London. I mean, you just. I put on my goggles and I just start going fast and I couldn't stop. Sorry. So I'm out there. I'm in my car. I'm at my desk. I'm listening. I'm taking notes. And you always throw out this word script. You got to have a script. 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 So. Break that down. Tell me, how do I do that? What what needs to be in it? What what am I? What's my thought process as I'm writing down my script? Talk there's a you, five. Walk me, walk me through that. There's a five part uh, uh, system for the for the script. Okay, and I'm gonna break down the parts. Part number one is rapport. So you want to script five questions for building rapport. And uh, those sound like. Give me some examples. Thank you for calling DJ Connection. My name is Clay. How can I help you? And they go, hey, Clay, I wanted to call to see how much you guys would charge for a wedding. They always ask that. Every service. Hey, right at the bat. Boom. Thank you for calling such and such op optometry. How can I help you? How much do you guys charge for our glasses? It's always that question. Always that question. So you say, well, hey, just in case we get disconnected, what's your name and number? Oh, that's see, that's a great that's a great first move. That's a move. That's a move because you know with all these cell phones now, you get phones get dropped a lot. You got to do get it. Dropped a lot. Now okay. you have their information. Now the second you say, hey, I'm always curious. How did you guys hear about us? And they go, oh, I found you on Google, Facebook, whatever. Got to track that stuff. And these aren't offensive. They're going to answer these questions. They're not feeling dirty or anything. I mean, they're like, because they're just saying, in the back of their mind, they're going, dude, I just want to know how much it costs for you to do so my DJ my wedding, right? So again, whatever. it's a role play. Thank you for calling the DJ Connection. This is the amazing Clay. How can I make your day great? You know, and then they say, <laughs> and they say something to you. They say, they say, yeah, I just want to know what you guys charge for a wedding. And the first question is, well, great. So just in case we get disconnected, what phone number and name can I put with your file? You always ask that. You're not saying no. You just say, great. Right, exactly. That's just in case move. we get it's disconnected, what's your name? It. I love it. You know, your number. <laughs> and you ask that stuff. You have to have five rapport building questions. Now, the second part is you have to have two need uh, finding questions. You have to have at least two need finding questions, preferably five, but at least two. Okay, so point number two is you have to, you have to script out the need finding questions. So let me give you an example. You'd say, well, on a scale of one to ten, if ten is price and one you know 10 means your suit you all you care about is price and one means you don't care about price at all how important is the price of the dj for you oh it's probably about a five okay question number two in a perfect world what are you looking for out of a disc jockey if a 10 is like a super high interactive guy and a one is very low key what are you looking for on a scale of one to ten well i don't want him to take over the wedding but i i want him to facilitate it and i want i know how important he is for the wedding so i want it to be uh, you know, higher end. I want I want the guy to you want know, him to lead the way. Lead the way. Can I repeat what you just said? So what you're saying is you want a guy to kind of lead the way. A guy who's energetic. A guy who's enthusiastic, but not over the top. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Great. And so, so what you're That's wanting right. to do? Is I want a guy that'll help us. You know, if the <laughs> wedding's a rainbow, you want to find I, the leprechaun. I, I, I want him to help us get over, over the rainbow. Question number three off the reservation. If uh, you were a unicorn and a leprechaun both would you ride yourself for the professional looking man out there this is for you are you tired of waiting for hours in disorganized barbershops around town are you maybe looking for an upscale haircut experience instead of being treated like a little kid if either of these thoughts crossed your mind then elephant in the room men's grooming lounge is for you the Elephant in the Room Men's Grooming Lounge is proud to offer a variety of packages and memberships for discerning men and regular customers who wish to maintain their tailored look 
while receiving discounts off of services and products. They're going to bring you in, they'll offer you a beverage, identify your style that you're going for, get you a tailored haircut from one of the professional stylists, wash your hair, and then style it afterwards so you could even go back to work. The experience is awesome. They even do cool things for members like a free nape shave on Mondays or a peppermint oil scalp massage on Tuesday. Check out one of the locations near you and book an appointment. You can check them out at EITRlounge.com or just dial 918-877-2219. Seriously, you're going to love it. 918-877-2219 or visit EITRlounge.com to book an appointment today. All right, Thrive Nation, welcome back to the Thrive Time Show. It's the happiest show in Tulsa. It's a show where we encourage you not to worry, but to be happy because you know that your business will be growing if you implement what we're teaching. It's a show where maybe for years you've been thinking about reaching to higher places, earning more money, growing that business, turning that dream into reality. And maybe you've been stuck in a rut. And it's a show all about that proactive, very practical training. I mean, Z, you and I are obsessed with that practical training, the very specific detailed the stuff behind the stuff yeah you know so many people can sit out there and rah rah and cheer you on and and look at you and say you can do it and that's a component of business coaching that's a component of you know edifying building someone up and just encouraging them you know but it's the practical steps it's kind of like you know in the in the segment before this if you guys are just now tuning in the good news is you can go to thrivetimeshow.com And we put every one of the shows up as a podcast on there. So you can share with a friend. You can listen to it over and over. You can take notes. You can pause it. Um, Because sometimes sometimes you get to talk a little fast because we always have so much good stuff to get into the show. But whenever you were talking about recording calls, we're doing a, a mailbag question today. And out of Dublin, Ohio, and basically it was, you know, how do I record when my guys are on the road? And so we're dealing with that. So the we went over the four reasons why. And the first one was to make a, you know, you you want a script. And then he's breaking down the five steps to making a great script, because a lot of you guys have heard us talk about that. Well, in our in-person workshop, this is one of the things we do. We take that concept of, hey, make a script. And you're kind of going, okay, I, I get it. I know I'm supposed to, but I have no idea where to start. I have no idea how to do it. I've never done it before, but I know I need to do it. Um, Help. And so this is the kind of stuff you get in our in-person workshop uh, that we're doing today. And matter of fact, tomorrow is the one for this month, the 24th and 25th of February. They're $500 for you and three of your team members to come into the workshop. If you say, I can't afford it, we've got scholarship money available. Money is not going to keep you from coming to this if you feel like you need to come to this. And with all the reviews, and you can kind of Google it and see Thrive 15 Conference reviews, I mean, it's life-changing, Clay. It's a no-brainer, and I promise you today, Thrivers, what we're going to do so you can hear a script when it's all said and done, I actually have, we're going to edit it up just a little bit, but I actually have a recording of a call that we have that we have actually helped a client produce, a script they've produced, and we actually have a recorded call of them cold calling somebody and actually setting an appointment by using a script. It's awesome stuff. So this is not a charlatan smoke and mirrors. This is the brass tacks of how to grow a business. And we have a very special guest inside the box that rocks today. This is a guy who we use for many of our printing needs. Um, a lot of times when you come to the Thrive15.com world headquarters, you'll look around and see prints everywhere. You'll see banners and signs, and you might say, one, what would possess a man to print that kind of stuff? And then the second question is, who printed all that stuff? Well, we have Rick Ellis with Arcadia Printing, who's a great printer inside the show. We're honored to have you here, Rick. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Hey, for people who are not familiar with Arcadia Printing, what kind of stuff do you guys print over there at Arcadia? I'm glad you ask. We have all kinds of services. We do offset printing, digital printing, uh, large format we have our garment printing, uh, screen printing, embroidery. We're a full-service print shop. We also offer promotional products uh, for those that like to buy the coffee mugs and that sort of thing. Well, you have, you have the two Ps going for you that I love here. You have an awesome product, and you also have a great price. And I love working with you because it's a deal where you never feel like you're, you're being a hog and you're trying to abuse the customer on the prices. You do a great job on the pricing. Uh, it's not the cheapest in town, but it's the best in town. Best quality, great price. The whole thing, it's a combination. Thrivers, if you're listening right now and you haven't checked out Arcadia Printing, you really should. And as we're talking about the scripts... What you want to do is, you, see, you want to script out the five parts of your rapport building scripts. So you want to script out five questions that you ask every time your phone rings. You know what you just skipped over? What I just skip over? 
You just skipped over a bit of farm logic. Oh, I skipped over some farm logic? You just, you just kind of yeah. threw it out there like in passing fashion. Mm. You're like that high-speed train today going by farms. Just one after another. You're in the French countryside. Uh, merci beaucoup. Having your little cafe latte. Yes. On your way to London and just, just going by farms. You can't go by a farm that fast, you see. Because down on the farm, what you just said about Rick, my number one rule in business, and that is pigs get fat. We like fat pigs on and the farm. And hogs get? Hogs get butchered. Oh. And somebody out there is going, what? what is, I don't even know what that means. Well, it means this, and you touched on it, Clay. And, and I like to kind of, you know, I don't want to just kind of skip over something. It means don't be greedy. Mm. In other words, you can make a good profit selling your stuff, Rick. But if you price it too high, then guess what? You're going to get butchered. You're going to lose your business because someone's going to come in and undercut you. So there's a balance in there of making money. All right, that's being a pig. No, yep. it's getting fat, making a good profit, but not charging too much for it. That is being a hog, or that's being greedy. So, there's, that's a, the there's, your, there's your farm logic for the segment. There it is. Th- this just in from uh, what's the organization that's obsessed with farms? What's what's the group? FFA. FFA. This just in from the FFA and Dr. Zellner's ranch here. The uh, farm logic tip of the day. Now, Thrivers, the here's day. the deal. So we're going into the rapport. There's five rapport building questions you have to ask. And by the way, if you want a copy of the script, get out to the Thrive Time Show workshop this Friday. We'll give you all the, all the templates, all the nuggets. It's all there. The second is you want to script out five needs-based questions, five d- questions designed to build the needs. Now, the, 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 the key to this is you want to ask the customer where they are versus where they want to be. So a good question would be, if you're like an orthodontist, you may say, well, let me ask you, if price wasn't, uh, if, if all companies charge the same price, What's the one thing you're looking for out of an orthodontist? If you're a real estate agent, you may ask, hey, if all real estate agents charge the same price, what's the main thing you're looking for out of a real estate agent? But the thing is, you want to make sure that you have five scripted questions if you're the business owner because you know more about the industry than the person you just hired. Work with me. If you just hired somebody, they don't know about the industry like you do, and so you want to communicate that, that, that knowledge on paper. And so, Rick, I want to ask you this question here. How long have you been been printing in the Tulsa area, my friend? I started in 1983. So, 83. I'm just kind of doing the math. 83, 93, 2000, 34 years. 34 years. And so, there's there's some things that you know about printing that most people don't know. So, let's, let's, let's take business cards for an example. Okay. I see so many business owners that print business cards, and they, they get printed out wrong. They come out wrong. They look weird. How could you at Arcadia help somebody make sure that they get their prints the right way when they're printing their business cards? Well, we have a great team, so I would advise them to consult with our graphic designer. Mm. We always go with the philosophy, less is more. Some people try to put their entire resume on a business card, so I would go with a little bit less on there, make it a clean look, and that's kind of what everybody likes. And now let me ask you this. When you're printing like a banner, you know, I see, I see business owners all the time who, um, you know, struggle to, to, to get a banner printed quickly because they say, oh, my printer, you know, doesn't know what they need. Really, I think the business owner doesn't know what the printer needs, and there's sort of a miscommunication going on there. Talk to me about, you know, if, if, if somebody out there is listening and they need to get banners and signs and all these things printed, what's sort of the, the first step they need to be taking? Well, you need to know what message you want to get across to your client. So that would be the first thing. Mm-hmm. Know where you want to put it. Yep. Know if it's an indoor or an outdoor application. Got it. So there's a lot of things that go into it. And then, of course, you want good, clean artwork. Keep in mind, uh, people's reading banners from quite a ways off. So you want to not put too much on it, but just enough to get the message out. So if I were going to script that, Z, how I would do it in the script is I would ask the customer on the phone. I would ask them those five rapport building questions. Question number one. Again, in case we get disconnected, how would you hear about us? You know, or in case we get disconnected, what's your name and phone number? Script all those five questions out. Then I move on to the needs, and I might say, now, will this be used indoor or outdoor? Two, uh, what is the message you want to communicate? Three, where will this print be located when it's done? And I ask them these questions, and that allows me to understand truly what their needs are in a succinct and scalable way. Now, Z, the scalable part is the thing I want to hammer home with the script. Scalable means that somebody other than the owner can handle the calls. And what, where do you see most business owners getting that wrong, Z? Well, they... they they are really good at it and so they want to do it and they never really come up with a good script and they don't know these rules of script making so the script they have is not good and then they're like why can't you sell it like i sell it you know and and the thing about it is they're not recording they're not following up they're not inspecting what they expect and so the whole system kind of 
kind of fails. And so the step one is getting a good script. And I think, you know, a lot of guys out there are taking good notes right now and saying, oh, my gosh, this is this this is going to allow me to take me and make multiple versions of me or multiple me's, you know, now and getting back, getting back to the banner real quickly. Yeah. I've got a rule of thumb for those out there making a banner mm. or doing a billboard. Um, there's a good rule of you. You don't want. You don't want to make it too busy. And people say, well, what does that mean? See, that's not, that's not, you know, what, what does that mean? What does busy mean? Busy is a relative term, right? <laughs> you want to keep it below 10 contact points. I think six is probably ideal. Six or seven things on there to look at. You get much more than that. And people, it's just too busy. It's just too much to look at. And they just, they, they just go, we're going to try to buy it. Now, Thrivers, after you've scripted the rapport and the needs portion of your script, now you have to get into the benefits. And the benefits, it's kind of like the soapbox it's kind of like the when you're a preacher and you're on the stage. This is your chance for about 90 seconds to preach the benefits of your company, a.k.a. the solutions that you provide for your customers, and you want to support each, each solution by a fact. And we come back, we're going to get really into it, but it's so important that every time that you say a solution that you provide, you must support it by a fact. There's a book called Soft Selling in a Hard World. And this underscores the rule called the law of credibility. But you never want to say anything that you cannot prove. It's so important. And when we come back, we're going to teach you more about it. Now, if you're just tuning in or before we kind of get back from break, I encourage you to go to thrivetimeshow.com. We have one ticket left. Thrivetimeshow.com. We have one ticket left for this weekend's Thrive Time in-person two-day 15-hour workshop. Are you looking to start or grow business? Then you are definitely going to have problems and questions along the way. You will find the answers to all of your business questions at thrive15.com. Thrive15.com provides online video-based business training taught by millionaires and successful entrepreneurs for less than a dollar per day. That's less than your daily coffee budget. It's no classrooms, no get rich quick seminars. These are trainings broken into 15 minute segments that get you the answers that you need. It's business school without the BS. I dare you to try a seven day free trial. Simply go to thrive15.com and the first 100 people will also receive a free downloadable for how to optimize your website. So stop wasting your time and money. Go to thrive15.com and get your business questions answered now. All right, Thrive Nation, welcome back into the conversation. Whether you're a brown-eyed girl, a brown-eyed boy, a blonde-haired boy, a, a redhead, a Samoan, somebody from the Alaskan area, we have thrivers in Singapore, people in Australia. We welcome you into the audio dojo of Mojo, where we are focused on making your wallet grow. Z, it could be said this show is kind of like a miracle grow for the wallet. I mean, specifically, we're deep diving into how to build a script today, but we're answering questions from thrivers today. But really, we're all about just helping your wallet grow, bottom line. I, I, I am just picturing right now all the thrivers out there listening to this right now. Hum it, hum it, hum it, hum it. And, and there's some people that are sitting at their desk right now, and, and their hip, hip on one side is rising, 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 rising. because their wallet is expanding, expanding, expanding. Greg, that wallet just got bigger. That's crazy. And it's just growing, and it's, it's getting uncomfortable to sit that way. Wow. And now he has to take his wallet out of his back pocket sit up on the desk because it's just it's getting so big. Now, Z, I have a, a real quick, uh, two quick examples about the power of scripting. Okay. Years ago, I was working with a franchise where the owner could sell a franchise himself. He was awesome. Awesome. And so what I did <clears> is I recorded him. There's a program called 8x8x8.com. We used a little different software back in the time, uh, back in the day called Celerity. But the point is, you just record the calls. Okay. And he told me, he said this. I remember him saying this. He goes, it is not possible to teach people to do what I do. So I need to spend all my time doing that. And I remember going, psh, psh. okay, this is not... Um, that's not a reasonable thing. But I couldn't say that because he's paying me. And I said, here's the deal. Can no, I please no, you, record? You, you probably try to encourage him, right? You well, probably it, had is a little, it, was, it, it, was it kind of romantic? Did you well, say, listen? As a coach, you don't want to irritate your client because you're still the boss, but you want to be direct and candid. So, so I said, put on your load. I you said, hey, kinda, hey, why don't you put those chocolate strawberries down? <laughs> no, but seriously, <laughs> I, said, I said, hey, here's the deal. I'm going to go ahead and record the next 5, 10 phone calls you do. I'm going to transcribe them, and I'm going to put together a script, and the next call that comes in after I do this, I'll book them, 
And if I book them, then if I if I use a script and I close a deal, will you will you you know will you see the value? And he goes, absolutely. Whoa, time out. Well, here again, speed train through the French outback. <laughs> That was that was a super that was a super move golden nugget right there. You just you just skipped over like I recorded the calls down the thing. You record so listen if you're out there going how do I script it because I know mine are awesome. Record your call. You have to do it and then you do it five six seven ten times. I like to go ten times. Yeah, and then you can take it and you can now form a script from what what you're doing. Exactly. So if you ever watched Jim Gaffigan, the uh, the comedian, or you watch Brian Regan, or you watch uh, Seinfeld. They have a thing called a routine, and what happens is every night they do almost the exact same routine, and it produces almost the exact same results. If you ever seen a great performer, if you ever seen Justin Timberlake in concert or Prince in concert, it's the same show or close to every single time. If you look at the greatest golfers in the world, they have the same stance, the same swing. If you watch baseball, remember Julio Franco had that crazy batting stance. If you watch basketball, uh, Rick Barry, the best free throw shooter in the history of the NBA, shot these underhand, ridiculous looking free throws, but it was a system. And all I'm saying is <laughs> That's you, ridiculous. you've got to follow the same system every time. And so the next part of the script is you have first you have rapport. You script out the five rapport building questions. If you missed it, go to thrivetimeshow.com. Two, you script out the needs-based questions. And third, you've got to script out your benefits. Now, a benefit is how you solve a problem supported by a fact. And so, see, I'm going to give the Thrivers three benefits that we always tell people on the phone about okay. our in-person workshops. Well, all right. Here we go. Of which we have one ticket remaining. So I don't have the script in front of me, but I say it so often, I feel like I, I've, I've got it kind of mastered at this point. So here we go. When you come to the workshop, to the in-person workshop, your satisfaction is guaranteed, meaning that the tickets are typically $500 to attend. Um, but if you if you for in our some sort of a financial bind, um, we have a scholarship program for you. But whatever you pay, if you're not happy, you get it back. And that is awesome. Second, there's no upsells. So when you come to the conference, there's nothing we have to upsell you. There's nothing. So when you come to the event, um, you're going to know there's no pressure to buy anything. And so I encourage you to go read the reviews, watch the videos. That's a fact. You can see people telling you that there has been no upsells. So you're saying that this the boom book that we give everybody that attends, uh, I don't have to pay extra for it? No, it's all included. It, this is all just included? Yeah. All this awesomeness right here, all this is just boom. And the third, and this is, again, my, my team would say this, but the third is that when you come to the event, this is them saying this, but they would say, uh, Clay Clark would be doing the, the, the talks. It's 15 hours over two days. And uh, Yahoo called him the Jim Carrey of entrepreneurship. You know, we kind of consider him more of like a Jim Gaffigan of entrepreneurship, but it's fun. You laugh, you learn, you have a good time. It's 15 hours of power. And when you come to the event, we treat you humanely like you're a business owner. So you're not crammed into a big uh, arena where you don't have room to take notes. You can sprawl out on a desk and it really just feels comfortable and inviting. And the point is we've scripted it out and we know what to, what to say. We know how to say it. And we know, we know that our representatives are going to say accurate things on the phone. And it doesn't matter what industry you're in. And so I want to ask our, our special guest today, Rick, with Arcadia Printing. Rick, you probably have some benefits that you've either a scripted out or you've taught your team over and over in team meetings. So what are a couple of the, of the benefits of using Arcadia that you like to believe, you know, makes you guys unique from maybe other printers out there? Well, we are a different type of print shop. We're not your typical print shop. We say that all the time on our staff meetings. Uh, we do so many variety of things. We're not just a walk-in copy shop and you leave. We offer such a variety of services. Uh, but one thing that we do try to do, and we go over every single week in our staff meetings, is we try to exceed expectations. Mm. So if somebody, from the time the phone rings, we try to take care of their needs to the art department, through the production, and all the way till it's delivered. You know how I know that you do this? How? Well, we've used you before, and you guys do an awesome job. I mean, it's a, it's a oh. great service, and I will say that um, the thing is you, you make that statement, but then you also back it up. And I think that's so important for the listeners, for your li if you're listening right now. Whatever statement you make, you have to support with a fact. You have to do it. You, you have to do it. I mean, so many people, I remember we did a workshop one day and we were talking about real estate marketing. 
And one of the people at the event said to me, Z, they go, how do you know that your script works? Z, someone at the conference puts their hand up and said, how do you know that your script works? And I was ready for it. You ready for what I told them? Uh, yes. And this is the kind of practical stuff and the kind of ability to ask questions that is just so awesome about the in-person workshops. And I said, because again, we're not a charlatan. We're not making stuff up. I said, hey, when we come back from the break, I'm going to queue up an audio clip of an actual call. Now, in real estate, there are certain people that choose to sell their own house, sell their own house and not use a realtor. And it's typically because they either A, don't have enough equity to afford to pay a realtor, or B, they just are kind of that crafty person that wants to do it themselves. And that's called a FISBO, or for sale by owner. For sale by owner. For sale from the root word by owner. Broadcasting there we. live from the center of the universe. You're listening to the Thrive Time Show. Coming in hot. Coming, coming in hot. hot. Coming, coming in hot. That's well, the thing about a live show, you know. I mean, yeah, you just get that. You never get that that feeling of of not liveness when it's of, live. What's, <laughs> <laughs> All right, now here we go. So I queued up this audio clip, and see, I'm going to play it for you now. Our our, our producer is going to do a live edit. It's a little bit of a tape delay, so he's going to live edit this. So, but this is a call that we have a person that I've worked with who's used this particular cold call script to grow a multi-million dollar business by cold calling for sale by owners, getting the listings, putting a sign in the lawn. By the way, when you have a sign in the lawn, other people call you. It leads to more listings, more open houses, more deals, more referrals. And Z, are you ready for it? Three minutes of oh, awesome. I can, I'm just, I can hardly wait. Now, you know, you, know, you, watch, you know when you watch football, how John Madden kind of breaks it down? I'm going to give you the rights oh, to kind of super, break it down. So we need a telecaster. You can make all the X's and the booms and the this and the this and this kind of watch this guy. He's so I'm going to play the clip, but you have the mic rights to comment on. Here we go. Okay, okay. good. Hello. Hey, this is Rich Gamby with Group. How are you? <laughs> I am good. How are you? I tell you what, I just enjoyed all 23 flavors inside of my Dr. Pepper, and now I'm moving over wow. to our our famous coffee Red Bull mixture. So I'm about to have wings. Oh my word! Pause. Let's doctor. get into that. Well, you see, you see, the good thing is you gotta, you know, it's a doctor. So anytime you can say doctor in a script, it's a good thing. You know what I'm Here's saying? Here's the deal, Travers. We scripted doctor. out the humor right there, though. Okay. So what he's saying is designed to not sound like a cold color. Who says they're having a Red Bull and uh, uh, was it Red Bull and Dr Pepper blend? No, I think it was just he said he was enjoying the 23 flavors of his Dr Pepper because there's 23 in there supposedly. It's all scripted though, okay? And we've it's sat down scripted. and written down every word. Now with the what watches because it, it doesn't feel scripted. <laughs> I just hammered three uh, vodka cranberries and I'm feeling pretty good. I can't good. feel my face. <laughs> 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 no, no, but it, when you get a cold call, it doesn't feel like a cold call if someone makes a comment like that. It yeah, feels humane. You're right. Yeah. Because typically, this is what happens when you cold call. You go, "Thank you for calling." Yada yada. How can I help you? Or you'll call someone. And go. Is this Mr. Robert Zellner? Who says your first and last name except for a member of the government? Or unless you're in trouble. No, and they never say or that. A they cold always caller. say Bob Zoellner. Hi, is this Bob Zoellner? <laughs> I always know it's a cold call. I'm like, no, he no longer lives here. Click. And then you ask them, "How are you doing?" And they go, "I'm doing fine." The reason for my call is so we don't want to sound like that. So here we go. No, Keep yeah. going. You're gonna pass out. <laughs> I mean that that. That's a very good possibility, That's but I'll insane. at least wait to die until after, after our phone call. Fair? <laughs> okay, good. Good. Boom. All right. So Important I'm not calling to wow you with my barista knowledge. However, okay. I, I am calling because I noticed that you are listing your home without the assistance yes. of a, a real estate agent and was truthfully yes. just wanting to know what the deciding factor on that was. Pause. You see how we asked a question? It's scripted so that she'll get engaged in the conversation. That's the idea. She's actually talking now. You feel like she doesn't. She does. She's not. She's not treating him like he's a cold caller now. They're kind of talking almost like they're human to human talking. Z. It's not human to caller combat. Oh my gosh! If this keeps up, he might set an appointment. Here we go. Just trying to save my three percent. That's what is, the deciding factor. How about one percent? Ah, I don't know. We'll see. I think we're gonna try well, it on our own, and then you know we'll see what happens. Well, but I don't think it's gonna be on the market long. Okay, when I, I agree with you, you live in a fantastic yeah. neighborhood. Truth be told, I was just calling mm -hmm. to see if I could set up a 30-minute conversation. I'll bring you some of said Starbucks Red Bull blend. We can go <laughs> we can go over everything that um, that we do, such as our drone videography and photography, um, uh -huh. our our state of the art um, graphics team, and mm -hmm. if you don't like us, you can pour that coffee Red Bull mixture down the drain. You can escort us to the door and then shut it right in our face. Or, best case scenario, we help you sell your house for 1%. Here we go. And based on your busy schedule, it's just going to see what would be the best time to swing on by for 30 minutes. Can you do it? 
You are a really good salesperson, and I really appreciate it. So I will give you 30 minutes. Oh, oh and she goodness. sets an appointment. And check it out. For every 100 calls this man made, okay, he was able to set seven appointments. Do you that's know what that means? Average. That's 7%. That's a pretty good strike rate. That turned into, a, usually out of every seven listings, we were tracking those, it was about two, uh, two actual listings. So every seven appointments, it turned into two deals. Do you realize, Thrivers, that's how a multi-million dollar real estate career was launched, was with those calls? That's incredible. And you know what? I'll be very frank with you. Just analyzing that call and breaking it down. Yep. He wasn't the smooth. That wasn't the smoothest call. I'll just be very frank with you. Yeah, I mean, but the he thing was a is, hesitating there. It almost sounded like a little bit that he was reading right in the middle of it. Of course, we were expecting that. But the but thing is, when you hire somebody that let's say they're making ten dollars an hour and they've never made a call before, you've got to have a script that's pretty tight so it allows people who are less less experienced to have success. Now, if you want to go out there and hire um, a very very talented and skilled sales professional, get the hundred thousand ready and go do it. Yeah, but that's my point though. It it didn't sound perfect, and yet he booked the appointment oh oh that's oh, awesome billy now that thrivers here's the deal we are all about helping you change your financial game but the reality is if you learn these things and you don't implement them it doesn't matter thomas edison said that knowledge without execution is hallucination okay vision without execution is hallucination so when we get back we're going to get more into the details of what it takes to acquire business we have a very special guest on the show today mr rick ellis with arcadia printing and he's going to tell us a little bit about how he's grown his company because he's been in the business for, you said, did you say 34 years? Yes. But you just look like you just turned 34. How is this possible? A lot of fish oil? Is it a lot of fish oil? Is that what you're doing? I'm not sure. Okay. All right. So he's going to walk us through, Z, how he's grown his business by doing what he said he's going to do and just standing by his promise and marketing consistently. It's going to be super exciting to get into the details of how local Oklahoma grew his business. Well, and that's fantastic. I'll tell you what, it's not too late. One ticket left. You can bring three team members tomorrow here at Thrive 15. Get on thrivetimeshow.com. Boom. Right now, how are you taking credit card payments for your business? It's never been faster or easier to begin taking credit card payments for your business than with Square. You know the little white square that plugs into your phone's headphone jack? It's awesome. This payment app is great for businesses such as food trucks, beauty salons, and retail shops. The users receive a small portable card reader that they can attach to a phone or other mobile device to take fast and convenient payments. The way it works is that it subtracts 2.75% of every time a card is run and it does it automatically. So if you sell a sandwich for $20, you'll see a net gain of $19.45 in your bank account the next day. If you enter the card by hand, it costs 3.5% plus 15 cents on top of that. They encrypt everything so you know you're secure. They make it super clear to start and even offer bonuses for sharing with friends. So you can learn more at squareup.com. It's free to download and works on all devices and operating systems. So make sure that you go visit squareup.com. All right, Thrive Nation, welcome back to the Thrive Time Show on your radio. My name is Clay Clark, the co-host with the Mo Oast, and welcome back to Talk Radio 1170, where you go for business school without the BS, because you could spend a hundred something thousand dollars on a business degree. You could go to some one of these get rich quick seminars. You could hire a charlatan. You could end up living in a van down by the river, but you've chosen to turn in, tune in to the Thrive Time Show where you can get those nuggets of knowledge. And one thing we pride ourselves on doing is answering the mailbag questions from Thrivers like you. So we have this original question that came to us from Dublin, Ohio. And the Thriver asks, I know recording calls is important, but if our sales reps are remote, how do we record their calls? Well, we walked them through the system. You got to write your five rapport building questions. You've got to script out your two needs-based questions. Three, we said you got to script out your benefits supported by facts. Four, you've got to script out your close. And we actually played you a recorded call so you could hear it. But we, what we did is we, we stopped right before he goes for the specific close. Now, I want to give you the, the, the specifics of the close so everyone kind of understands what's happening here. Okay, What you want to do is you never want to ask, do you want to move forward, yes or no? Never ask that. Never say, do you want to move forward? Don't do it. This is what you ask. The technical 
details. You ask this. One, preferably, when would you like to start? You know, and they go, well, I'd like to start maybe next month or next week, or preferably, when do you need the print piece? Uh, you know, preferably, when do you want the photographer to be booked or whatever the question is? You just want to ask that, you know, when would you like to start? Then you say, well, with my schedule, you know, I'm very busy. I know you are too. How does this time or that time work? And you want to set a specific time and Z, why is it so important when dealing with business, business professionals and just people in general? Why is it so important at your optometry clinic that you set a specific appointment as opposed to going, well, you know, anytime between 10 and like 4, basically, you know, we'll just get you. I mean, why is it so important, if at all possible, that you set a specific appointed time? I am so glad you asked me that specific question. Yes. Because this is one of the things we deep dive into in our in-person workshops. You see, here's the trick to getting stuff done. Here's the trick to managing your time. Here's the trick to being in charge of your schedule and your calendar and not being just kind of out there. Oh, here's like, this is like the rudder on your sailboat. Okay. Mm, mm. And that is you only get done what you have scheduled. Oh, come on now. Say it again. You only get done what you have scheduled. So when you're sitting there at the end of the night and you're eating your dinner and you're looking up and you're like, I didn't get anything done today. And then I would ask you, well, could we look at your calendar? What did you have scheduled? Uh, Nothing, but I knew I had (laughs) had some stuff to do. Here's what I see what's going on inside the head of your customer. You know, we all, we all basically move to different strokes. Like everyone has a kind of their own, uh, uh, you know, worldview, their own, their own way of doing things. But now what will happen is, oh, no. I want to get some 80s different strokes music queued up. Oh, I want to let this play for like an hour. Be right play for an hour. Is that okay? I, can I take a break? And okay. Come no, back no, no seriously, here's the thing. A lot of times, you know, you're talking to a customer who's never set an appointment in their life for anything. And so if you don't ask them, like, hey, when's a good time? Our, our optometry clinic, we're, we're very busy now. We want to get you in. We don't want to make you wait. Would 10 or 10.30 be better? If you don't make them choose a time or ask them to choose a time, they will go, well, I'll tell you what, man. I mean, I'm pretty much I'll just come on in there around like 11-ish, you know, probably noon, 10. Eight, 10. And I used to, as a consultant, I used to let people play that game with me. And, oh, my gosh, you talk about a wasted day. You have four customers that might or might not come around between 10 and 2. All of a sudden, you feel like you're dealing with a major cable company or something. I mean, you're just a waste of your whole afternoon. Broadcasting live from the center of the universe, you're listening to The Thrive Time Show. And then when you go for the close, eventually you're going to run into this fifth step, which is an objection. And Hi. Hi, my name's Clay. I represent the human race. And we only have three primary objections. Objection number one, no time. Objection number two, no need. Objection number three, no money. That's all we've got. See ya. That's all the human race has. No time. No need. Well, that was actually the voice no of Mickey money. Mouse, so that's not even a human. I I, I don't know why you would confuse me with Mickey Mouse. I'm the voice of the human race who's representing the reasons why we say no. No time, <laughs> no need, no money. That's the thing. But people, No time, no need, mo- no money. That's it. And people have those objections all the time. So you might as well invest in learning how to overcome those objections. And at our two-day workshop, Z, we'll teach you this thing called the deal wheel. But for sake of time, we don't have, we don't, we don't have time, to, to, to Z, today to get into the deal wheel because it's a very specific move. It's a system. It's yeah. a downloadable. But if you come out to our in-person workshop uh, tomorrow... We have a, it's for, from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. One ticket left. We will be happy to give you the moves, give you the system, teach you the deal wheel. It's like a Jedi power when it comes to sales. Yeah, and the important part is, like Vanessa pointed out earlier on today's show, is that it's one ticket, but you can bring up to three of your team members. So if you have a couple of managers or you've got a couple of trainers, or you've got a couple of people that you want to have also put their ears on this too and take notes with you, and you have to pay for each one of them. You buy one ticket, you can bring three people. That is amazing, by the way. It's amazing. It's it, a. It, it's like a miracle. It's huge. It's like a business miracle. It's huge. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's, it, it is. It's I was just, just reading Donald Trump's statements. But yes, but basically, now, the Thrivers, here's the deal. Here's the deal. We're moving on to our next question from a Thriver just like you. Oh, this whoa, is whoa, from whoa, wait. Time out. Time oh, out. We're, whoa. Not done. We're not done Oof. with We're not done with I get the, so uh, excited sometimes. I just want to move on. And I don't, right, for just, I just want to hit this button and just let it, my celebration come out. Z, did you want me to you want me to stay here for a minute? No, 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 no. I, I was just saying, okay, that was step one, scripting. Then we had the other three steps: quality, analyze, and quota. Mm-hmm. And I'd like to, I'd like to touch on those briefly. Okay. And then I also want to let's just finish up this segment on this one, then we can start the next segment fresh with a new question. How's that? He's a fair guy. He's a fair guy. He's a fair question. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna do. I'm gonna, you know, I think I want to. I want to, you know, marinate. I want to marinate. Now, here's the deal. One, you want to analyze the quality of the call. Once you have a script, you just have to know the people on your team by default are not going to follow the script. Well, the thing about it is, and, and that's a comment we made whenever you played that recording, is that I said, you know what? That could have been smoother. But, you know, the 
the quality. So you, you, you coach that up. You have them repeat it a few times. You have them role play with you a few times. You get it a little smoother. But the bottom line was that guy gets a big pat on the back because he closed the deal. I mean, he got the meeting. He got, right? got the meeting. Absolutely. And it did turn into a listing, just so you know. Now, Thrivers, uh, we have a very special guest inside the box that rocks today, Rick with Arcadia Printing. And, Rick, I know when you before you print anything, you guys look at the quality of that and you make sure that things are spelled right and you sort of obsess about it. Why, why, I mean, most printers I've worked with don't do that. How important is it for you to analyze every print piece before it ships, before it gets printed, before it gets out your door? We just want to make sure that the quality's there, everything's correct before it gets into the uh, hands of the consumer. Now, if people want to go to your website, what's your website, my friend? ArcadiaPrinting.com. ArcadiaPrinting.com. But I'm going to tell you this. Thrivers, it wouldn't be sane to print a bunch of print pieces without proofing it physically, without seeing the print, nor is it sane <laughs> to approve a script if you haven't heard the calls the people are making. It doesn't make any sense. It's like analyzing game film of a football team but not watching the film. Just going, well, in summary, guys, I mean, I kind of skimmed through the footage. It's just, yeah, in summary, you, uh, you missed a couple blocks and, uh, you know, you fumbled one. In the detail, you'll find the difference. It's so important to analyze those details. Now, the final, the, the next couple points is you want to make sure that the quality of your script itself is good. Like, because if you gave someone a bad script and, oh, by the way, almost every script that I write is not very good the first time because you have to improve the script over time as a result of hearing the calls. And the fourth step is you want to have a quota. And I'm going to give you the quota thrivers out there. If you're listening, every salesperson listening to this right now, every salesperson that will work for you, every salesperson who's serious about their job can and should make 100 outbound calls a day. 100 what? outbound calls that per day. Sounds, that sounds excessive. I could do that in four hours. Easily, no problem. Usually talk to four or five people, leave a ton of voicemails. 100 calls per day, all day. If you can't make 100 phone calls a day, you need to, uh, I don't know what you need to do. You need to take some Red Bull. You need to take some maybe some coffee. Maybe some, uh, whatever you need to take. Maybe you need to like swirl up some, some Dramamine uh, mixed with like some Sudafed. Whatever you need to do, just find the chemical concoction that works for you to motivate yourself to make 100 calls a day. If you're, if you're doing sales, you don't make 100 calls a day, you will fail. Okay, managing your money has not been easier. Mint.com is the solution to ambiguous and blind money management. You can effortlessly create budgets that are easy to stick to or even use one that they make for you. Design budgets that are appropriate for now and put you in position to succeed in the future. Get notifications for weird account charges and receive personalized tips for eliminating fees and saving more money. Check your credit with a free credit score and explore what you can do to improve it to be able to purchase the things that you really want later. Link up the app on your phone and money management on the go has never been easier. You can even link up your portfolio accounts so you can see your bank accounts and stock values side by side. Mint.com, you gotta go check it out and you can sign up for free. Again, that's mint.com, M-I-N-T dot com. Go sign up right now. It's definitely a game changer for money management. Hello, Thrivers. Welcome back to the Thrive Time Show on your radio, the most epic business show ever. If you're looking to make your sales moves just a little bit more clever, you're looking for all the answers to all your business questions, you have found the right show. It's the Thrive Time Show on your radio. If you feel like you're trapped inside an episode of Game of Thrones, well, that's just weird because at no point are we trying to trying to fix a subliminal Weave in those subliminal Game of Thrones messages. We're just talking with epic voices while playing the theme song to the Game of Thrones. Nothing weird here, Z. That's just something we do. Nothing. No, <laughs> nothing. I'm between. Yes, <laughs> nothing weird. Unbeknownst to Z, we've been trying to play subliminal Game of Thrones messages for several weeks now. This is the first time it's been manifest out loud. But anyway, no, seriously, <laughs> Thrivers. We are now answering the mailbag questions from Thrivers like you. And we have a great question that came in from a Thriver and uh, located there. This is Her name is Heather. I don't know where in the world she's from um, because it does not say here, but it does say her name is Heather, and she asks this question. I'm going to start by asking you, Z, the answer. And then right. I'd also like to ask Rick Ellis the same question with Arcadia Printing, our special guest. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. We're getting off recording calls now? Yeah, we're, we're moving on. We're moving on. It's, it's, it's in the well, past. One, one last one. I know. One last little thing it's I wanted to point out. One last little thing I wanted sure. to point out. Yeah. If you're in the United States of America, a lot of people are saying, well, that's against the law. Yeah. That you can't record a call. Well, 
You can't you can't record calls. I don't. Here's, I don't the law the law specifically says that if one person if one party knows it's being recorded, it's legal. Hmm. So you know if you want to record um, your employees uh, talking to somebody, um, as long as your employee says thumbs up, they know that they're being recorded. It's all good. It's Does all that make good. Does that make sense? That's why when you call American Express, it says for quality control, this call may be recorded. Bingo. Yeah. That's why that message says it all the time. So, drivers, that is the move. I'm just telling you, you've got to have a recorded call. You have to have a recorded call. You have to have a template of what success looks like. And so we now go back to the mailbag. Let me get my mailbag music. i got some right, good mailbag, mailbag music. music. Here we go. Here, here we go. go. All right. Heather writes this. What factors should we consider when applying a pricing model to our adversity coaching company? We are trying to decide if we should go after a few high-paying high clients or more clients at a more modest price. So, Z, I think the question is, you know, should we go after a high-priced model or low-priced? Uh, Z, I'm going to go with you. Let's, let's let's start with you. Pricing models for 500 points. Dr. Z, what say you? I say you start high and you can always go down low. It's always easier to lower your price. You know, um, I've had companies before where we think, wow, what are people going to pay for this? You know, it's a uh, fill in the blank. And you're like, uh, will they pay uh, $1,000? $1,000? Will they pay $2,000? $2,000? So after research, you know what the competition's doing. Mm. All right. And then you, you value your, you've, you've done some research. You put a, you've uh, mystery shopped your competition. So you try to have an idea of your benefit basis is based upon them. And if you're clever and you're smart, you can still come in and be a pig and not a hog still underprice them but still make a pretty good a pretty good amount now when you when you're talking on there um, that is a concept when you start a business you have to get your head wrapped around are you going to be a Walmart model or are you going to be a Nordstrom's model now this business fits in more for a Nordstrom's model in the sense that you're modeled to your adverse adversity coaching company mm. adversity coaching what is that by the way Clint? that's a an individual person who's coaching another person. So in terms of the scalability of it, it's not an automated thing. You right. can't just mass produce it off an assembly line. That's right. a person to person. That's something where you're not going to be able to compete on the cheapest price and probably stay sustainable. Right. So that's one where you have to, that's why you're more of the Nordstrom's model about adding value benefits. You want to be able to make sure on those. When we talked earlier about the scripts, you know, when you build your rapport and then you, you do your needs and then now all of a sudden the benefits part of it, you've got to make sure that you're packed full of benefits and you also need to make sure what your, what your competition is doing so you can beat them up on the benefit side of things. But you want to start high and, the, and here's your rule of thumb. If no one's buying it, your price too high. Ah. It's, kind of like real, it's kind of like real estate. If I went to you, Clay, and we drove around Tulsa and I pointed to any house in Tulsa and said, would you buy that for a dollar? Your answer would be? Uh, yeah, I think so. Let's okay. do it. Let's do it. Okay. And if I asked you, would you buy that house for uh, $20 million, you would say? Well, uh, not, not so much, Ski. Yeah. So the point is to find, that, to find that balance in there. Obviously, I know that's a ridiculous you know, analogy, but it's the same thing as far as, you know, if your adversity coaching was, you know, very, very inexpensive, they'd say yes to it, but then it'd be unsustainable because you can only do so many clients for so long. So you have to figure out where, where your cost base is, and then you have to figure out what the competition's doing. And then, then you want to try to start higher. And then that way gives you room to discount or to do a deal or to, you know, scale it back down if you need to. So now, Rick Ellis, I want to ask you the same question. Rick Ellis with Arcadia Printing, our special guest today inside the box that rocks. You've been in business for 34 years, so you know a little thing or two about business. Talk to me about pricing. How do you go out there and, and price something? What's kind of your model? What tips would you have for our listener out there, Heather? Well, you kind of need to know the market that you're in. So... Uh, different markets require different pricing levels. Uh, here in Tulsa, where it's very moderate, uh, moderately uh, priced, it's um, a lot different than it is like in L.A. So know your market, know your surrounding area, know, uh, uh, know your product, first of all, and know what the other competition is selling it for. Now, Thrivers, I'm going to give you three specific tips that I think encapsulate everything that Z and Rick just said, and I want to make sure I give you three action items Action item number one is definitely know your niche, or to your point, know your competition. You've got to know what the other guys are charging. Yes. you got to know that because you can't be priced 20 times higher. I mean, you, you just got to find that out. And there's, there's weird industries out there like the jewelry industry where it's normal to have major markups, and there's other industries like uh, – 
Uh, let's go with like a Walmart. You mentioned Walmart. I mean, if you're out there competing with a Walmart, I mean, good luck. Their, their margins are so slim and so low. You just have to know your niche. The second thing I would do is make sure that you factor in enough profit to survive. I mean, you have to factor in enough profit to survive. You have to know um, how much profit do you need to make it? Because if you don't factor in the profit, let me tell you what, no one else is going to. I mean, you've got it. You just have to do that. And the third thing, and this is probably the part that I go, people say, are you, are you serious? I would definitely have, and again, this kind of ties into our first point, but I would definitely mystery shop every single competitor. I would definitely, I mean, go through the process of calling them, trying to book them, get their emails, get their re response, see the process. And you might say, is that ethical? I don't know if it's ethical for your family to starve because you have no clue of what your competition's charging. So I'd say point one, know your competition, know your, know your, know your market, yes, definitely. Two, know how much money you need to make to, to be able to survive. But three, go through the process of, of, of actually picking up the phone, calling your competition, and finding out all the details. Because if you're, if you're flying blind, Z, I'm telling you, the it's not so kind when you're out there and you have no clue what your competition is charging and you keep losing deals. I mean, you, you've got to find that out. Well, here's the deal. We are like the optometrist of business schools. In other words, if you're blind or flying blind or you don't know that you can't see something, you come to us and in our in-person workshops or on Thrive15.com or our one-on-one -on -one business coaching, we actually examine your business eyes and give you business glasses. How's that? Now, Z, I haven't seen anything oh, no. since 1978, <laughs> oh, but I can tell you one thing, at Oswald's Bagels, we uh, what was the? Was that? I never, I don't remember. But the point is, the I don't need uh, fancy glasses. I don't need to be able to see things in front of me. I don't need the fancy internet. I'm just flying blind, baby, making it happen. Oswald's bagels. I make every bagel myself out of my van that I live in by the river. It's all paid for, Z. I own that van, Z. I own the van. Well, and I'm so proud of you, Mr. Oswald. Obviously, you sold a lot of bagels. I know you had seven. Made, I've sold seven. I know you had make every bagel by yourself, and it's a it's a fascinating business model. It's more of a more of a process, more of an art. Each each year, I make one ceremonious bagel. People gather around, usually my wife, myself, my son, and I sell one bagel each year. Stay tuned for more from Oswald's Bagels. This show's episode is brought to you by Moz.com. If you have ever considered the World Wide Web as a viable strategy for your business, you gotta check out this tool. Online marketing is complicated, but Moz Software makes it easy. Companies like 99designs, Otterbox, and Aaron's, they all use Moz because it works. Explore organic search keywords for your business, research Bing and Google search results for your targeted keywords, and link up Moz Local and Google My Business. Seriously, this tool is crazy powerful with the clarity it brings to online marketing for your business. Even if you're just curious, start a 30-day trial with Moz.com today. It's a game changer for your business. Moz.com, M-O-Z.com. All right, Thrivers, welcome back to the Thrive Time Show on your radio. We've got some 80s for the ladies. Now, Z, many of the people on the AM dial are asking, could you turn it up? I'm trying to enjoy my lunch at Oklahoma Joe's. Could you turn it up? Now, Z, this is the part where we're going to give shout-outs back and forth. Shout-outs to great Oklahomies, great Tulsans. Here we go. Terry Fisher. If you know Terry Fisher, send that man a text message. He's a great Oklahomie. Z. Joe uh, from Oklahoma Joe's. Joe, Joe Davidson. Davidson. Sean Copeland, Regent Bank. Send that guy a text. He's a beautiful man. He's at Matt Henderson of Henderson uh, and Associates. In your face, Steve Sutton, great American. Eddie Sutton's son, great American. Love Steve Sutton. Uh, Clay Clark, uh, best business coach in the world. Oh, wow. Dr. Zellner, a humble and beautiful man, the kind of man that really needs no hype, no <laughs> intro. He doesn't need somebody to sit there and explain to you that he is the world's number one optometrist. He helps the America see 2020. He helps our country. C2020. He helps other continents C2020. And recently, he's teamed up with Elon Musk. We don't have any data to verify this. But he's helping other planets to C2020. It's unbelievable the, the, amount of, the amount of optometry knowledge he has. He knows more hey. about the cornea than any American. Hey, uh, actually, actually, that's not the case. But <laughs> Martians, Martians need to see clearly, too. Okay, so don't, don't uh, I mean, Elon and I are Mr. Musk, excuse me. We're, yeah, I yeah. Mean, we're, 
we want to we want to by 2025 we want to have people to be able to go to mars and and we want the locals um th- that are there now to be able to see clearly do you remember marvin so. the martian marvin the martian the uh, the character he had the the green that the guy with the big head he had the roman remember that guy oh yeah isn't Is that, that delightful roman? yeah isn't yeah. that delightful he's always threatening people with his you don't want to shoot me with your laser you know that kind of oh, thing yeah, I love he that was guy. always threatening to shoot you or you to be sh- shooting him and this whole thing now, Thrivers, we're getting into our mailbag, and we have a one final question today that we're going to get into that just gets me excited. This comes, at to, comes to us again via Dublin, Ohio. And here's the question. This is a great question about uh, accountability for salespeople. It says, how do I get my independent sales reps to follow our key performance indicators and to update the lead tracker if they are contractors? Now, Z, I have three specific thunder moves that I'm going to, to uh, share, and I would like for you to just kind of pile on or add any 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 anecdotal examples, any tips. Here we go. Wait, wait, wait a second here. Yeah. Would you, would you uh, put this in English for all the thrivers listening out there that are not, you know? Well, like, okay. Uh, What's happening is this guy has salespeople who work for him, okay, and they're so. just not doing their job, and he wants to hold them accountable, but he's saying they're contractors. Okay, now explain. Well, here again, what is it? What's the difference between a contractor okay. and a W two? So a W two employee is basically somebody who, uh, as a general rule, has signed your handbook. They've signed probably a non compete, and they are beholden to do what you want them to do because they are employed solely by you. A contractor has the right to go work for other people, and really, technically, you can't control the hours they work or what they do, and they have contracted with you to do a provide a certain solution for a certain price. Now, why would you have a contract? I mean, if you've got a sales team out there, hypothetically, what's the advantage of having them as a contractor versus what I'm going to call an employer? We refer to the business as a W-2 employee. So if you've ever worked for someone, you have punched the time clock, and then at the end of the year, you've received a W-2, which is a tax form for you to do your taxes. Two reasons. If you're if you're a contractor, at mm. the end of the year, you receive what we call a 1099 form, Oof. and that allows you to do your, um, your taxes, okay? So... Anyway, break. Why, why would I do one or not the other? One? There's two reasons. Uh, one is that as a contractor, uh, basically you don't have to set a, you don't have to set aside certain money for taxes. So certain people look at that and go, "Hey, look, I don't have to pay his portion of certain taxes, so that saves me money on taxation." The second is they feel like, "Hey, with a contractor, I'm not committed to somebody. If they don't perform, I can move on quickly." I see. That's so typically the move. Yeah, and, and most contractors are paid on performance, and they're on some kind of retainer. So you might say, "I'm going to pay the guy a thousand dollars a month, and then fifty dollars per deal he closes, or something like there, that." There you go. Versus if you have an employee, you've got to pay them per hour, um, and it's a lot more paperwork and a lot more tax li- liabilities for you as the employer. Yeah, and thanks to our, our most recent presidents, there's more paperwork involved with hiring employees, and we're very grateful for that. As an, as an entrepreneur, we love more paperwork. The more difficult it is to hire somebody, we love that. Yeah, it's it makes the day. Thank you, so p- previous three presidents. Thank you, guys. One, two, three. We appreciate you guys. Awesome. Thank you for working extra hard to make more paperwork for us. But this is not a political show, so here we go. We get into the details of this. <laughs> here are the one, two, three. Um, one, if you want to hold your sales reps accountable, one, just let them know right away the expectations. And I hate to be super forceful, but let them know the expectations. Bottom line, just let them know, okay? So if they don't get it done, quit using them, okay? I mean, don't be hostage. By, I, I have managed a team of employees and contractors, and I will tell you what, I see zero difference in their performance because I don't put up with it. So I'm just telling you, I don't care. They say, well, technically, we don't have to come to a meeting because we're contractors. And I say, well, technically, I'm not going to pay you anymore. We're done. Broadcasting live from the center of the universe, you're listening to The Thrive Time Show. I buy my stuff from Office Depot right now at 71st and Lewis because they're nice people over there, and I like them, so I buy things. But if I'm not happy with the service, I would go somewhere else. But I am happy, so I go over there to, like I guess, it's 81st and Lewis, and I buy stuff. It's a contract relationship. I don't have, I'm don't i not bound to them. I just buy where I want to buy. It's the same thing as a contractor. Second thing, follow up. Follow up. Follow up, follow up, follow up. Z, from the root word, follow up. You have to follow up. Otherwise, your sales will go down. You have to inspect what you inspect. You just have to follow up. I don't know how else to tell you. You just got to set up a set time to follow up and hold them accountable, man. Yeah, you said that just a little wrong there. You said you've got to inspect what you expect. Yeah. Yeah, and that's this key, this KPI, key performance indicator. So in other words, you're holding, you say, listen, okay, if you're going to be a contractor for me and you're going to be out there selling for me, you have to do X, Y, Z. Now, you could sit there and go, well, I guess he did X, Y, Z this month. Hmm. I guess he's going to do X, Y, Z next month. Um, I guess he's going to hit his key performance indicator because I'm not checking. 
So here's your money. Do, 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 have a nice day. Boop, 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 boop. Instead of, like you said, you've got to inspect. You've got to get in there. You've got to follow up. You've got to follow up on the numbers. You've got to follow up on the leads. You've got to follow up on the sales, on the closings. Whatever it is you're paying that person, they may be generating leads for you. They could be closing deals for you. They could be, and you know what, straight on commission. And you're going to find out pretty soon if you put them straight on commission, which means that if they don't sell anything, you don't pay them anything. And you might say, well, you know what? I don't have to fire him because he's not, <laughs> he's not selling anything. But you still, you're wasting your time and energy inspecting them. You're wasting your time and energy training them. You're wasting your time and energy just having them on your team. So even though you're not having to pay them money and they're out there selling for you, they're not selling anything, get rid of them. <laughs> you know, just don't let them waste your energy. Now, here's the final, the final move here, Thrivers. And this, is, this, this, this deserves a little bit of intro hype. Oh, that's good stuff. Bro. I encourage you to commit to the goal and not to the trolls. There's a lot of people you, that, who are out there committing to trolls, meaning you've just said, Bobby, I'm going to hire you as a contractor. I'm committed to you. I believe in you. And they're not producing any results. They're not helping you in any way, but you're committing to a troll. A troll being somebody who's not getting their job done. You know, they're kind of a, they're just kind of, well, I wanted to make the calls, but I didn't know what you wanted me to say. I was going to do it, but I, you know, just kind of a trollish individual. Commit to the goal, not to the trolls. Z. You've got to do it. Absolutely. I tell you what, because what will happen is if you, if you don't do that, if you're not very firm in, in laying down what you expect, and then inspecting what you expect, and then following up on what you just, you know, because it's kind of one of those things, kind of like, okay, I just found out that Billy's uh, not doing anything. Now it's up to you to do something about it. Yes. You have to do something. You have to do the follow through on it. You've got to say, hey, listen, you know, okay, uh, I told him what to do, <clears throat> and I inspected, and he's not doing it. Mm. Uh, so now the ball's squarely in my court, and I'll just hide my head in the sand and pretend like Billy will get better at it just magically. Uh, I'll go to uh, my back uh, closet, get out the fairy dust, and uh, sprinkle that on the situation. Sprinkle it. little uh, sprinkle uh, there. You know, Rick, or, I wanna... or I could take some action steps. You say, listen, I'm, you guys are blowing my mind. I, 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 I'm wanting to start a business, and I'm realizing that there's a lot to it. And I want to get my head wrapped around all those things. I don't have four years and $100,000 to go to business school, so help me. And the only way I know how to do it is to encourage you to come out here to the Thrive Time in-person workshops. They're this Friday and Saturday from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. I'm telling you, we have a scholarship available. So from a pricing perspective, everyone can afford it. They're $400 is the full price value of the ticket. However, we have a scholarship available. Nobody will be denied because of the pricing. We only have one ticket left, though. We might be sold out, but then we have one ticket left there. The second thing is they're very interactive. We get to, you get a chance to answer all your, uh, have all your business questions answered. They start at 7, they go till 3, but we break every 45 minutes to answer your questions. The third thing about our workshops that's fun is that during the lunch area, lunch time, I don't really take breaks. And so if you want to sit there and have an hour-long conversation or ask any questions, no question is too tough uh, for us. We're here to help you. We're here to, encur we're here to encourage you so that you can become a successful entrepreneur, just like Rick over here with Arcadia Printing. Rick's been in business in Tulsa for 34 years. And Rick, if people are looking for printing, printing supplies, business cards, banners, how can they get a hold of you, my friend? They can reach us on our website at, uh, or go to our website at ArcadiaPrinting.com, or they can give us a call at 918-622-1875. What advice would you have for the entrepreneurs out there who are listening that feel like they don't have any mentorship and have no clue of what to do? Why is it so important to have a mentor or some kind of advisor to help you? Well, none of us know it all, <clears throat> so you need to always uh, lean on other people sometimes. Come to this Thrive 15 uh, time and... Uh, learn from the best. I'll tell you what, Thrivers, if you come out to our workshop, you're going to see a lot of prints put in our building by Arcadia Printing. They're the best printing company in Tulsa. We use them. You should use them too. With any luck, you might run into a Dr. Zellner sighting. He might be on the beach front there, but near the river. He might be hanging out with some of us, you know, with the guys who are by the van, by the river. But get your ticket at thrivetimeshow.com. Z, as always, three, two, two one, one, boom! boom.